May I now request our Minister, Honourable Minister uh, for Health, Sri Ramesh Kumar, to say a few words. Good morning to everybody. As it is generally the case with all politicians, we come late and we go back early. So sorry for being here 15 minutes behind the schedule. Very happy to be here for the inaugural ceremony of the International Healthcare Tourism Congress. Our uh, beloved Principal Secretary, Dr. Shalini, Madam. We have uh, Professor Ravi Ramurthy. Madam Mary Eckhart, and we have the Principal Secretary, Government of India, Mr. Navin and Mr. Saha, ladies and gentlemen. To be very honest, I've been so busy in the last couple of days, I didn't get any time to apply my mind on this subject. I firmly believe in not trying to make an ass of myself by speaking about things that are not relevant. I could just get a tip out of what was being broadcasted to you. I can both safe and tell you India is a safe destination. That's one thing I can tell you. Language was being mentioned. We had the honor and privilege of being ruled by Britishers for three centuries. So we are acquainted to English. We may not be very good in English, but we understand English. So there should not be any difficulty. But tourists who come outside the country, to converse with them in English or understand what they speak at least. The main objective is it should be cost effective. I think the government of Karnataka is making its best efforts to see that it is. We also have to simultaneously take care of the fact that it's not enough if it is cost effective, it has to be also quality-wise good. We are conscious and cautious about it both. The government of Karnataka is on its way almost to introduce a law whereby the price list is also published in advance for certain various ailments that are to be treated. So there cannot be any scope for speculation or exploitation either. By nature, humans are selfish. They tend to become inhuman. Professor Ravi Ramuthi is very cautiously looking at me as to what I am about to say. I am always concerned and critical about the absence of professional ethics. According to me, it's a sin to exploit an ignorant man who is in your hands as a patient by virtue of the knowledge you possess. It is incumbent on the person in the profession to be diligent and to be discreetive about it by oneself. As a matter of fact, that's not happening. Therefore, we have reached a stage where we have to enunciate laws 
to tell one to behave in a particular manner. Anyway, I would love to tell you, apart from the traditional system that is prevalent in the entire world, just allopathic system, people who come to India from outside should be pleased to know that we have the Ayurveda system in this country which is a history of centuries which is something very very amazing I am not advocating for it but I have a duty to tell you about something which you might not be aware of that they make magic without much expenses, treatment, in a very simpler way, the deadliest of the diseases are handled. They have the results on hand. And the world is becoming small. It's a global village now. We try to communicate the best with us to the rest of the world and as well the rest, whichever is best elsewhere is taken by us. That's how we try to serve the cause of humanity. In the near future, UK Health uh, City project is coming up in an extent of about 300 acres of land near Hubli Darbar. All the formalities have been cleared. So I shall be extremely happy by being the Minister in Charge of Health and Family Welfare Government of Karnataka. to see the outcome of this Congress helps us travel further this international healthcare activity. In the system of governance we have in this country, the minister is not expected to know everything or anything. Minister is a symbolic head. He is chosen amongst the commonest of the commerce. So therefore we are ably assisted and represented by our very efficient bureaucrats, Dr. Shalini Rajanish Madam, who is our principal secretary, is the ablest. So I have tried to articulate whatever I could to save my face and quietly withdraw. The rest all would be given to you by her. The understanding is whatever she speaks is all mine. <laughs> and had there been any misgivings out of what I spoke, that also is credited to her account. If there is anything best out of what she says, it's all mine. Please bear it in mind. <laughs> I always tell her, oh ma'am, you are the topper in the list. I'm a villager. Whereas, you know, it's a scintillating experience. We come from a very remote uh, village background, raised in a very, very unimaginable uh, circumstances. We try to live up to your expectations. I have always believed it is that government which is best where we govern the least. We allow governance to go by itself. So the government of Karnataka extends a very hearty welcome to all the delegates that are here. We assure you of all our cooperation. I hope the best could emerge by the the end of tomorrow, 
and I hereby request authorize appeal to Madam Dr. Shalini Rajanish to kindly keep in touch with you and all that needs to be done from our side. I assure you in one word, we shall do it. I am not like uh, the general uh, tribe of ministers who are generally experts in making assurances. I don't belong to that category. I am very discreet, choosy. An assurance means it shall be done at all costs. And I am sure, Madam, you will see that no assurances are made which I cannot implement. So I am thankful to all of you for extending this privilege. As a matter of fact, I had committed to be here. But you know, our discipline doesn't work. We work at circumstances uh, which compel us to change our uh, schedules. So I am expected elsewhere. And this is how the life of a politician runs. I beg of you not to mistake me for taking a leave of absence from the conference. Once again, I conclude by offering my best wishes to each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We're very honored to have you here. Thank you for the kind words and assurance.